Welcome to part 2 of Switzerland in the Great War mod for Hearts of Iron 4. Where last time the Great War happened, around us in general, it was on our border, most importantly it didn't get in, and we didn't go out either. I'm just sitting here, the war's happening, there's fighting all over the place, but our defences are so well prepared we don't need to worry too much about it. So we're now about a month after the end of the previous part, and the fighting is just about dying off. The Entente eventually gave up on their offensive. Let's see how things are going so far. Looks like we lost about a thousand troops in the fighting. Not too bad. We've got 50 or thousand so to spare, so we can fill in those reserves easy enough. Now I need to find out what we've done to the enemy. The game doesn't make it all that easy, but if you've killed enough of a certain faction's troops, it will tell you. We've killed quite a few French, over 200,000. It's a similar deal for the Italians, our other main opponent. When you add in the fact I've also killed some Japanese and Chinese who were also participating in this offensive, we've killed something like half a million Entente troops, or inflicted that many casualties, I should say, not necessarily killing them. Whereas we've taken 1,000 casualties ourselves, so a 1 to 500 ratio, that's pretty good. If we keep that up, we should be able to literally take out all of the enemy's armies as they break upon our mountain fortresses, and that will be that. Looks like we've already made a big dent in the enemy's war effort. At the very least, we've stopped them from making their offensives. They gave up for a bit. Well, a short bit. Here they are later, attacking again. They're also losing along the rest of the line, so I suppose it's not really just me. But I expect our troops are getting the best ratio and are destroying the enemy the most. So we just need to keep an eye on these numbers and make sure we're not ever going to lose some of these battles. The problem was, it actually says we are losing this battle here in the corner. Now I'm an experienced Hearts of Iron player at this point, so I know that these numbers do lie and they don't necessarily mean anything. It's very much a process of divination knowing what the numbers mean. However, there's a risk that I'll have to actually move a unit to defend that corner and things do get worse and worse there, so in an incredible twist in what some analysts are calling gameplay, I did click on one of my other divisions and tell it to move over there to have more troops in the dangerous corner. The rest of our board is looking mostly okay, except for the tile directly north of the danger tile. There we're starting to lose organization as well, perhaps because these ones aren't quite so in the mountains, they have less of a terrain bonus. So we need more fortifications there to make up for it, I suppose. Well, we just about get away with it because the enemy's overall offensive is called off just before we lose that tile right there. So with a bit of actual gameplay, we've managed to hold on, breaking my personal challenge run rules of not actually doing anything in the game, but I suppose it wasn't enforced that strictly anyway. Let's see how things look now. We've lost 5,000 troops, so that harsh fighting on the border is no doubt to blame for that. I was about to see what damage we'd done to the enemy, but they started attacking again right after. They're determined to get in right across the border. They've clearly got all these offensive plans set up, and the AI just has them ongoing, so their troops will attack whenever they can. Well, we repulse them again, and in the next calm, I check the numbers again. Our kills have skyrocketed, we're up to like half a million casualties just against France alone. I think overall we're now at something like a million en enemy casualties for 6,000 casualties on our side. The ratio has become worse with that deadly fighting on the flank, but it's still pretty good. I'm starting to train some new troops using up some of our precious manpower because I was aware that our borders aren't as fully defended as they could be. If our allies were to leave, we'd actually be in big trouble, so we could do with more armies in the field. We're jumping ahead now to when the Entente stopped butting their heads against me a couple of months in the future. Things have calmed down again, and the lines all look pretty much the same. Nothing's been achieved. And checking out the orange bars on these little icons, Looks like we've actually killed, like, loads of them, or at the very least, we've broken all of their equipment, so their division strength is very low. Normally, that bar would just go up during the downtime, but because they don't appear to be replenishing, the enemy might be actually either out of stuff or out of people to use the stuff. I think we're getting close to actually killing them all. Perhaps they can change their conscription laws to do something about that. Finally, took a quick look around the actual world map, which I hadn't done for a long time. Well, essentially nothing is happening except the Russian front is gradually being advanced by the Central Powers. 
we're starting to get now into a bit of some air war stuff. I'm going to try and set up some airfields and invent a couple of planes. And we do need to do this because the enemy are doing it essentially. I finally checked out the air war situation. We're being bombed. There are just loads of blimps around blowing everything up. And we are going to be gradually damaged by that process. So we need to try and put some planes out. The issue is production. We have few military factories. They're mostly working on producing our heavy artillery guns, which do take a long time to make. And we have no access whatsoever to rubber anywhere in the trade network, which you need for all of the planes you can build. That means we can only make planes at a glacial pace, a couple per year at this stage. Need to work on that. A quick look at the scores. We're now up to 7,000 casualties, manageable, and the enemy are still climbing up there. I think I went through and it added up to something like 1.5 million casualties inflicted by us. And in the broader war, the enemy have taken triple our casualties overall. So even our allies are doing pretty well at taking down the Entente. The Entente are still winning technically though, because they're just a much bigger faction. They have the usual allied central powers crew, and they also have China and Japan on their side. All of the British Empire stuff will be coming in, the USA is on their side as well. So they can keep pouring more stuff into this meat grinder right here, and I suppose they will. A quick look at our production here shows that we're struggling to keep up with our heavy artillery needs, although that's partially because I've just put out some new divisions that took up all of our stocks of heavy artillery. But yes, you can see we're currently not producing fighters at all. That's because our military factories are getting bombed by those blimps, and that's going to be a death spiral really because we need the factories to have any chance of ever stopping the blimps. And if the enemy just produce more blimps with their factories, there's not much we can do. It's not a good situation. Well, here's some good news for us. I forgot that this stuff could happen. The Soviets are making their appearance on the world stage and taking over parts of Russia. So with their help, this could get the Russian Empire out of the war and free up tons of our allies to perhaps do something on our front and make things a li little bit better. The main thing I want them to do is go capture some enemy airfields or something to get the pressure off me. Well, we'll just leave them to it. Maybe something good will come of that in the future. We do see a lot of movement on our front. So the Entente are redeploying troops. Maybe they intend to go and fight the Soviets or something. I don't know. Well, that will help us out as well if they take some of their troops elsewhere. Although actually the troops aren't really the issue. I'd rather they're here attacking us and dying than actually progressing the war somewhere else. The real issue is the air thing, as mentioned. We're gradually being bombed to pieces pretty slowly because the blimps aren't very good at bombing. But there's not much we can do about it. I've put out my nine fighters to try and stop them. But they're very weak, those fighters, and the blimps have too much air defense for us to actually damage them. Therefore, not much is happening there. Well, it's going to give the pilots some experience. Looks like another ground offensive is underway. Don't really need to worry about that for now. However, there is another bit of gameplay. I had to move a unit into that corner again, the one that keeps coming under pressure. It can be attacked from many directions at once, which debuffs you to some extent. Although we still have like a hundred times the enemy's stats looking at the numbers there, so that's got to be helping out. And one of the things to keep in mind is that that gradual aerial bombardment in the background, while it's not really obvious, it is weakening us. Because as well as taking out factories, they can take out our defenses. Here's a little look at the construction queue. Our entrenchments all over the place have been damaged. This will reduce the extent to which they're actually helping in these battles. And it's going to be hard for us to do anything about that. We don't have many civilian factories to do repairs. I've got the construction repair focus on, which doubles the rate at which they naturally repair themselves. But still, it's going to take us years to get over this damage. And the damage is still being done, effectively. And there's not too much we can do. We can't produce planes to stop the blimps. The enemy might send their own planes at some point, then we'd be really screwed. Let's have an update to the scores here in mid-1917. We've lost 8,000 troops, not so bad. Our enemy alliance has lost 10 million more troops than we have. So overall, the war seems to be going kind of well, although they still heavily outnumber us. We've done very well ourselves, of course. We've got at least like 2 million casualties. When you include the United States and China, two guest combatants on this front, We've got loads more kills than I thought we had because we've killed loads of these guests, specifically 
We've got people coming from all over the world to die on our Swiss mountains, and it's going very well for us, at least. We're still technically losing this war, but we're making the Entente pay extremely heavily for the nothing they're really getting out of this. Although we're the aggressors, so it is up to us to attack them. And that appears to be what's happening a bit later. Our side is going to be making a general offensive here, pushing all over the place. And of course, we are not going to be participating. We certainly don't want to be attacking. We know how World War I goes. They can now take massive casualties. We'll sit back and carry on with my projects. That project mainly being trying not to die invisibly in the background to bombing. Here I am cancelling many of my construction projects so that my few remaining civilian factories can help out with the repairs. The issue of course could be that if they bomb us so much that we can't really make repairs anymore, we'll get stuck in an endless death spiral and just lose all of our ability to produce anything. So we're going to start going through our repairs list. We've got the construction repair focus as well, repairing them for us. That's all good. We're also very slowly starting to manufacture more planes. We're up to a massive 12 now. However, against 450 enemy blimps, and our planes can't kill any of them, well, it's not doing very much. We occasionally damage them enough to send them back and not bomb us. I'm going to here put some more factories working on the planes. It's not going to make a huge difference, actually, the number of factories, because we have no rubber whatsoever. It can even be the case that increasing the number of factories, because it also increases your deficit in a resource, increases the debuff to production enough to make production go down the more factories you add, although it does increase your maximum efficiency to have more factories. Well, not too much is happening there for now. I finally remembered that we're not totally mobilized. I was on war economy mode. We're now in total mobilization mode. I think this makes it slower to deploy troops or something, but our economic side will be better. We'll be producing more stuff and our civilian factories will work more on repairs rather than making consumer goods. So no stuff for the people, but we might be able to keep our railways working. Now a bit later, I noticed our casualties have increased massively and this was a concern. I was so blinded by looking at all that aerial war stuff. I didn't really notice that our side has actually pushed the front line forwards and because we have front lines here, our guys advance with them. We're still not attacking of course, but every time the enemy push back, which they often do, we're now getting involved in battles outside of my fortifications and that's more than doubled the casualties we've taken in a very short time. Extremely worrying. So because of that, we need to not use the front line mechanic. We need to use full back lines. For some reason, I always struggle to set these things up. And the other struggle I'm going to have is remembering which tiles I've actually fortified. But broadly speaking, we need to try and get out of these fights and go back to our original positions. We can't do this while the fights are happening, so we're going to be taking more casualties here. Very tragic. I should have paid more attention. I should have had these full back lines here from the beginning and not relied on front lines, really. Well, later on we're getting there, but the casualties are mounting. They're coming in in the thousands, fighting in those open battles. We need our entrenchments to be more invincible. Very nasty. And with our limited manpower, suddenly having lost an extra, like, 15,000 guys, well, that actually is a pretty big deal. Unfortunate indeed. We will have killed some enemies along the way, but I'm sure the trades there will have been much worse. Overall, though, in the big picture, our trade is still pretty good. It's at something like 23,000 for a couple of million en enemy casualties inflicted by us. Looking pretty good, and the Swiss are still on top in that regard. The other issue was not remembering which tiles were actually fortified. So sometimes when I fell back, I fell back to the wrong places. This front line here needs sorting out as well. And this full back line I'm making, some of those tiles weren't the ones. It needed to be slightly further back. I'm messing this up. And we're going to end up fighting in more disadvantageous battles. Well, not disadvantageous, but slightly less than we're invincible in terms of our advantage. So not exactly what I'm looking for with our no gameplay and no casualties challenge run that this apparently seems to be. Well, at least economically, things are going okay-ish. Most of our stuff has been blown up, but everything that remains is focusing on making fighters. We're making a couple every week, and we're actually up to like 70-something purely because the enemy haven't deployed any fighters to defend their bombers, and we're occasionally stopping the bombers from bombing us. But as mentioned, our fighters have too low stats to actually turn the blimps away, really, so we're getting bombed all the time in the background. There was a big lag spike there. That means something crazy is about to happen. In this case, 
It's the Russian Civil War, the counter-revolution as the Entente-backed Tsarist faction reappears. So this probably won't impact us, I don't think the Soviets are involved in this war. For now at least, they soon will be, let me tell you. Well, the fighting continues, but now we're mostly not involved. It's just the odd bit of territory the enemy can attack that's on my original front line. If our allies get defeated and are pushed back to our front lines, I guess we'll fight again, but we're certainly not going to advance, and we're definitely not going to advance beyond the front line and actually attack the enemy. We've got people to preserve, and really, it's all about the air war now. The land war for us seems to have been won, but we are actually being bombed into submission. One thing we can do to try and solve the situation is have better planes. We do research the next plane. The issue is that switching our production over to that means we go from making two of the old fighter per week to three of the new one per month. So the production efficiency needs to build back up again. We also need more resources imported to do it, which will slow down our repairs as well. Overall, hard to say if that's helping. What I was really hoping to get was this, anti-aircraft guns. We haven't been allowed to build them so far because they're a 1919 invention. Or are they? It wouldn't be so bad to take the ahead of time penalty on something that's just from the next year. But the penalty we're getting for anti-aircraft guns is massive. It seems to claim that it's actually several years in the future rather than 1919. I was pretty outraged by this, so I thought, well, I'm just going to cheat. This mod is in beta, so I thought that's probably just a mistake, like it's on the wrong year or something in a database. However, when I started the research, it said it's from 1922, and I thought, ah, the actual mistake is just that it's in the wrong place in the technology tree. Maybe it really is intended to be for 1922, and we're not supposed to have this yet. But then I went to Wikipedia and started thinking, well, why can't I invent anti-aircraft guns? And indeed, yes, there were anti-aircraft guns in World War I. So after looking through the Wikipedia page, I felt justified in giving myself anti-aircraft guns. I thought, well, we can't just keep going like this. It's getting worse and worse. Here's something we can do. So I used the console to try and give myself them for free. I did it wrong and accidentally gave myself Early Fighter 4 instead. That's because the research slots are numbered from zero rather than from one and you just type research and then the number you want to get a tech for free. So we end up also getting Early Fighter 4, which can help us with the same problem. As penance for having taken these techs, I'm now going to leave my research slots doing some useless stuff for me. We can research naval doctrine, which will do approximately nothing for us, and we can research ships. So we'll work out how to build an 1890 pre-dreadnought, that's going to be a sufficient waste of time to perhaps make up for the fact that we've been cheekily cheating to get some future techs. I'm going to try and build the early, fight, early Fighter 4, although we still lack the industry to do that very efficiently, so we won't see too many of them. And we'll start to build the anti-aircraft guns. It's only the first couple of levels. You have to research it more much later on to build the full suite that you usually get in Hearts of Iron. Might do something for now, though. This leaves us sort of just struggling to stay afloat here. We've got very few civilian factories left. We have to keep repairing them as a priority, and we'll try and get the anti-aircraft guns out to maybe reduce the rate at which they're getting destroyed, depending on how effective they're actually going to be, while we also try and somehow produce ourselves an air force with fewer and fewer military factories available, and certainly very few resources available. Well, we're starting to turn away some of the blimps with our increasing air force, so we're getting somewhere but the number of blimps is probably going to go up at any moment since the allies of the Entente can just send anything over here, including, as mentioned before, fighters, which would be a problem. Well, let's see what happens in the next part.